So if you're in that position and you're just not quite where you need to be in order to pass your step one or complex one, this is the video for you. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Sorry it's been a minute since I've posted. I have currently been studying for my board exams and as you guys can tell from the title of this video, I did actually decide to postpone my USMLE Step 1 exam. Um, for those of you who don't know, like I go to a DO medical school, so I don't necessarily have to take Step 1, but I don't want to put myself at a disadvantage by not taking Step 1, um, just because my year is the first year that we're on a pass-fail system with these board exams. Um, so I want to make sure that I'm super prepared to take step one because the last thing I want to do is fail step one. Now, I actually just took Comlex level one a few days ago, so I'm super pumped about that. And I do plan on making additional videos going over like my study strategy with both of these board exams, how I felt with Comlex versus step one once I get to that point and end up taking step one, which is gonna be right at the end of July. But basically in this video, I wanna just talk about why I decided to ultimately postpone my step one exam. So this was actually a very difficult decision. Um, if you guys asked my wife, she would tell you that I was stressed out about this decision for a few days because I was taking practice exams and I just was not scoring where I felt comfortable going into step one. Um, and so I took a few days to kind of reflect on how prepared I felt for step one. And I mean, ultimately I just decided that I just was not ready to take step one. And this was probably two days before I was actually supposed to take step one. So. It was like at the very last moment where I was like, I'm not ready and I need to postpone this exam just to make sure that I do get a passing score. And so one of the reasons I'm making this video is, as you guys know, I like to be completely transparent about my grades, about my med school journey with you guys because all you ever see on YouTube is a high MCAT score, a high board pass rate, um, how people got A's in their med school classes. But there's so many people out there stressing out because they have maybe lower GPAs in medical school or are not quite prepared to take their board exams and they need to find comfort in knowing that it's okay to postpone your board exams if you just need, you know, a few extra weeks of preparation. So if you're in that position and you're just not quite where you need to be in order to pass your step one or complex one, this is the video for you. It's okay to actually postpone your exams. We always hear how medical school is so competitive and so stressful and the last thing you guys need is to get down on yourselves right before your board exams. And that was kind of like the mindset I was in. And you don't wanna go into your board exams feeling unprepared, feeling down, feeling doubtful. You wanna be confident. And um, the only way to do that is to do well on these practice exams. Now, unfortunately, since this is the first year of pass-fail, there's not much to go off of. Um, you know, I committed probably the biggest sin any pre-med or med student could commit. And I actually went on Reddit and Student Doctor Network, which I highly advise that you guys do not go on these websites because they are very discouraging and you are going to feel worse after you go on them than you did even before you went on them. So please just take that piece of advice. Don't go on these websites unless you want to feel absolutely terrible about yourself, terrible about your preparation, and basically everything regarding medical school. But I did it anyways. I went on those two websites and it was definitely a mistake, but honestly, I think I needed to see where other people were at with taking these practice exams. Now I'm talking about the NBME exams, which are the practice exams um, provided by the test writer themselves. It's probably the best indication of how you're gonna do on your actual boards. That being said, I've heard both sides of the story that you'll do better on your boards than your NBME um, scores or you're gonna do worse or gonna do the same. So I really didn't find any clarification. And like I said, this is the first year that there's pass fail. 
So there's not a lot of great information out there regarding this topic on, you know, when you should feel prepared to take these exams, like what percentage should you be getting correct on these exams. And that's mainly what I was going off of. And basically the consensus is you need to be scoring right around 60% or higher um, in order to feel confident going into your board exams. Now, I don't know if this is true. Um, on the NBME website, it does say that a 60% um, is kind of that passing rate. And so, you know, take it with a grain of salt. If you're scoring below that 60% range, like I was, I was right in that mid 50s to high 50s range. And I'll post my actual scores on here so you guys can see kind of where I was at. Um, but yeah, I was in that mid to high 50s range and I, I just did not feel confident enough to risk, I don't know, my future, my medical career, um, residency placements on, you know, a high 50 going into boards. So that's the whole reason why I ended up postponing my um, step one exam. I did take the UWorld practice exams as well that they include. There are two of them. And I didn't do very well on those either. I think I got a high 40, um, like a 48%. And then the other one was like a 52 or something percent. I'll try and post those ones on here as well. So as you guys can see, I was nowhere really near that 60% range. And all I was seeing on Reddit and Student Doctor Network were people posting that they were in the 60s and the 70s and 80s. And I'm just like, how are you guys scoring so high on these exams? Like, maybe I'm just not a great exam or test taker. Um, as many of you guys know, I didn't do very well on the MCAT. That's even an understatement. I did pretty bad on the MCAT, but I was still able to get into medical school. Um, so maybe it's my test taking ability. I don't know. But guys, I did close to 6,000 practice questions over the last five or six months. Um, and I thought that would help me prepare best for, for boards, and I think it's still the best way to prepare. Like I said, I'm going to make another video on how I actually prepared for boards and how I would recommend that you guys go about this as well. So I did all of these practice questions. I made sure to review the concepts I got wrong and regularly revisit those concepts to keep them fresh in my mind. Um, but for some reason, I was still scoring just under 60% on my practice exams before step one. But to give you guys kind of an idea of when I was planning on taking these exams, step one I had scheduled for like June 17th, and my medical school ended like the last week of May. So I had plenty of time to study, and I was studying all throughout that second semester of second year. Um, that's really when I started kind of my dedicated um, so I had a solid dedicated time. I had probably two months. So that last month of medical school plus a month of full dedication um, after medical school ended. And I think it was enough because I got to a point where I was just burnt out, guys. I mean, doing almost 6,000 practice questions um, along with doing medical school over the last semester, you just get to a point where you've seen every topic in the first aid book and it comes to a point where you just need to figure out the things that you just continuously get wrong and you just need to hammer those topics down but anyways i'm going to make a video on how to properly study for boards um, i think my strategy was really good um, i just needed a little bit extra time um, but more on that very soon you guys um, again sorry for not getting out videos like I used to, um, I am going to start making more like medically based videos. So kind of not completely abandoning the pre-med side of things because I still want to help you guys um, who are trying to get into medical school but are still struggling. So if you guys are in that position, come talk to me on Facebook, Med School Mentor is my Facebook page. You can book a consult with me and we can figure that out together. But I want to kind of shift my focus more on the medical side, medical school, board prep, and studying strategies type of things. Um, I do have a GoPro, so I'm going to start doing maybe some vlogs in my car as I'm going to and from clinic now that I'm going to be starting my third year of medical school. Um, so stay tuned for all of those things. If you are in medical school and you are preparing for boards, whether you're a first year, 
um, or a second year, come talk to me on my new Facebook page called Medboards Prep Mentoring. Um, that's where you guys can book a consult with me and we can discuss strategies on how to best prepare for boards um, and basically anything else that is concerning you guys regarding medical school at this point. And then lastly, I want to just talk to you guys a little bit about, um, I guess, two things, burnout and why I felt prepared to take Comlex even though Comlex was about 10 days after I was gonna take my step one board. So Comlex, um, I had scheduled for June 27th. So yeah, 10 days after I was gonna take step one. So ultimately I ended up taking Comlex first um, and step one is gonna be second. So that might be a question that many of you guys have is which one to take first versus second. Um, obviously this is for DO medical students only. Um, so I guess my advice for that would be it doesn't super matter. Like I was going to take step one first. Um, you obviously need Comlex and you need to pass Comlex in order to graduate from a DO medical school, whereas you don't need step one. Um, the only reason people are still taking step one is to stay competitive with our MD counterparts when it comes down to applying for residencies. So now this really only has to do with people going into pretty competitive specialties. So if you're planning on doing, you know, surgery or derm or um, just any competitive specialty, then you're gonna wanna take step one as well. Um, if you are planning on going into family medicine or pediatrics um, or some specialties that aren't nearly as competitive, even um, emergency medicine, which is what I'm interested in, even though I'm still going to take step one, you probably don't need to take step one for some of those less competitive specialties, um, just because it's not as difficult to get a spot in those residencies. Um, there's probably many more open spots when it comes to those things versus surgery um, and derm where they have you know, very limited spots in a lot of applicants. Um, but honestly, guys, it turned out to be kind of a blessing. I do actually like that I took Comlex first because I was preparing for step one and, you know, I was doing all my micro pathology, all of the body systems. I was trying to hammer those out. And like I said, I postponed my step one about two days before that exam. Um, and then that gave me actually an... And that actually gave me a day or two extra to cram for my OMM portion of Comlex. Um, so that was actually really nice. I got a little bit extra time to cram, you know, Chapman's points and viscerosomatics for Comlex. And now that I've taken Comlex, I can throw all of that out the window and go back to just studying all of the different body systems, the pathology micro, all of those different things and not have to worry about OMM now. Um, that is done and completed, and I can just completely focus on step one now versus before, you know, I was studying for step one, knowing that after I took step one, I was going to have to cram hardcore for OMM. So it's kind of how you guys um, look at it. No matter what you guys do, as long as you guys feel prepared going into boards, um, you should be just fine. Now I know I talked about some statistics for step one and how to know like when you would feel prepared to take that exam. Now for Comlex, I've seen that the pass rate is actually a little bit lower. So I've seen as low as 45% correct, um, but I feel like on average it's about 50 to maybe 55% correct um, is considered a passing score. Now guys, I don't know if they curve these exams or if they simply fail the bottom 5% of students. I have no clue and I don't think anybody really has a great idea on how they're gonna go about this whole pass fail thing. But if you guys can at least be scoring around a 60% before Comlex, um, you guys should feel just fine going into that exam. I took two Comsays, which are the equivalent of the MBME exams, but for the DO exam, and I passed both of those. Like it gave me an indication that I was going to pass and I passed those exams as well so it's a half length and you just have to get above a 400 which is passing the first one was like two months before my complex and I had like a 405 and then 
um, about a week before my Comlex, I had about a 450. Um, so there was some improvement and I did feel a little bit more confident going into Comlex knowing that I was already above that 400 mark. So fingers crossed that I passed Comlex. Um, you know, I don't know how I really feel about it. I knew, you know, a good amount, but then I also was unsure about a good amount of the questions. Um, but I don't know if anybody really comes out of their boards feeling really great about it. So hopefully I passed. Um, I'll let you guys know in a future video on if I passed or if I failed. Hopefully it's not the latter. But yeah, guys, if you guys have any questions about if you should postpone your boards or how to study or whatever, you can drop them down in the comments. Like I said, I have a new Facebook page called Med Boards Prep where you guys can book a consult with me. Um, we can talk strategy. We can talk basically anything medical school related, boards related, um, and how to tell if you guys are actually prepared enough and ready enough to take your board exams. So I hope this video was helpful for you guys. If you guys are feeling stressed about boards, don't worry, you're going to be just fine. Um, and if you do need to postpone your boards or cancel your boards or whatever, just know that it's okay. Um, everybody has a different path to becoming a doctor. And that's something that the sooner you guys can figure that out, the more relaxed and confident you guys are going to feel. So um, it's good to talk with you guys again, make videos again. Um, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video very soon.